What is good, everybody? John D. Saunders here. I'm super excited for my presentation today. We are rocking here with the Webflow Con for 2022, and I'm going to dive in and give you all some facts. So one, I'm going to be talking about from wireframes to websites, how to design and build even faster. So I'm going to walk you through an actionable process on how you can take your sitemaps, your sketches, your ideas for a website, and move straight into high fidelity to get your website process expedited and move into Webflow faster so that if you're working with startups and other company types, it's going to be really easy for you to follow this process to get the job done and get clients exactly what they need to excel. Now, before I jump in, I do want to talk a little bit about me. You're probably wondering, who is this bald black man talking to me right now? <laughs> I'm actually a Webflow designer and developer. And so just a little bit of info, uh, I'm a family man, so you can see me here at Animal Kingdom with my son. I'm a huge Star Wars geek, so you can see my Boba Fett shirt there. Uh, there's my five-year-old son and my wife as well. I'm pretty much a family guy, big geek, big nerd. So anything Marvel, anything Star Wars, anything pretty geeky, as you can see in my background, I'm down for. So if you want to talk about that stuff, hit me up on Twitter. Uh, we were able to travel to Chichen Itza, Mexico able to travel to Animal Kingdom and other places, all because of what web design and working with startups has brought me. So I can say that I'm really lucky to be in this industry and really blessed to be able to provide this value to you and your, um, and your team as well. So just a little bit about me. I'm a founder and creative director, uh, the founder of 54 Digital. So we primarily work branding, web design, and web development. We help startups excel by building profitable websites. And 90% of that is due to Webflow. It helps us expedite the process, get the job done, and work efficiently to get client websites live. I'm also the founder of Black Illustrations. So we're a platform where we create illustrations featuring people of color doing amazing things, whether it's in STEM, web design, and other visual assets for your web design projects and presentations. I'm also the founder of Urban Wallet. So as you can see by now, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Urban Wallet is a financial literacy blog that was recently acquired by the Budget Easter. So now I'm really allocating my focus toward agency life as well as Black illustration. As I said before, passion for books, anything sci-fi, uh, Marvel comics, Legos, as y'all can see, Optimus Prime in the background, and hip hop. So if you want to talk Jay-Z, Nas, anything New York based, I'm your man. Now, without further ado, I don't want to bore y'all with the details there. I'm going to jump into the agenda. So first things first, we're going to be talking about the sitemap, right? We all use them. We all leverage them in our web design projects. I'm going to show you the best practices and some of the options that we've used in our experience. Also, our new design process. So we'll talk about how we've structured this and how we've worked with dozens and dozens of clients to help get this job done. I'm also going to talk about from sitemap to high five. So in a usual case, you're going to start with a brand discovery or some type of session to learn about the client. You'll go through the sitemap, low fidelity, mid fidelity, then high fidelity. I'm going to show you how to really expedite a lot of that and be able to work with your client directly to get everything you need in this sitemap process. Also, by the end of this presentation, we'll talk about case studies and examples and real life examples and times we've used this with recent projects. And then lastly, I'm going to give you access to this resource template via Figma that we've probably been working on for close to two years. So hold on, strap in, and let's go, y'all. Now, what exactly is a sitemap? Most of us know this as designers, but I want to break down the different caveats of how we use sitemaps in our web design and just overall design process. So a sitemap creates a visual and user-friendly blueprint of an easily navigable experience of your website in real time, right? Think of it as the blueprint. As you can see, huge Jay-Z fan, you can see his blueprint album is right there. Think of the sitemap as if you're building a house, this is the blueprint of square footage, what's going to be in each room, and what details will be provided in regards to that. This is a very simplified sitemap version right here, as y'all can see. Sitemap breakdown that gives you all the details you need to make an informed decision on the website. What this sitemap doesn't include is the overall structure and layout of that website, which we'll show you in our newer process. So here's a visual sitemap. You can go to websites like Octopus and be able to create these in real time on the fly. Think of a visual sitemap as a drawing or sketch representing the structure of a website. Pages are represented as blocks and cells linked together in hierarchical 
uh, organizational chart. So think of this as like an overall structure. Then you have, this is an example, right? So you have an FAQ page with a header, search, questions and answers, live chat footer. So think of this as a very simplified way to visualize your website. This is the way we used to do it as well, but th this new way I'm gonna show you really helps condense this and low fidelity into one type of strategy. Then you have an HTML site map. A lot of times, if you're looking to migrate a website, this is a migration we did for a website called The Plug, we basically list all the URLs of that old site and then have the new URLs that they're going to be mapped to. Sometimes the URLs don't change, but in most cases they do. We try to create this and upload this into a platform like Webflow so we don't get any errors when we migrate the website. So this is a very like bare bones version. Here's Apple's website. As you can see, this is a sitemap page that they've created where all these titles link out to specific pages. Now, here's an XML sitemap. This is a list of pages readable by search engines like Google. Submitting an XML sitemap to search engines allows for better and more comprehensive website indexing. This is very SEO heavy content, so I won't go into deep in this, but basically this is gift wrapping your website, telling Google, hey, here are all the web pages I want you to scrape or look at so you can put them on the search or search engine result pages. And here's what I think will happen. You'll submit that website to Google. Google will come back and start to position you for specific keywords. So this is another important component of the sitemap. Here's an XML sitemap pulled from another platform called WordPress, where you have all the list of URLs for that specific blog type. Now, sitemaps are great for a lot of things. They're great for collaboration. They're scalable and flexible. They can drive innovation, right? Anytime you see an idea or something you want to implement, it's really easy to sketch this up and be able to implement that with a sitemap strategy. Lastly, it helps with visualization. Now, this is the difficult part. A lot of clients will come to you and say, hey, I need a website build, or hey, we're doing a rebrand, and we need some help with that. The issue that happens a lot of times is the client can't visualize what you're looking to create specifically for them. So if you're doing a low fidelity wireframe or you're doing a wireframe sketch, it's hard for them to really visualize what that will actually look like. That's why this sitemap strategy is important because they're able to see at a bird's eye view how the columns, how the content, and how everything is going to be structured moving forward in that site design. So let's talk a little bit about the design process. It's proprietary to our agency, but at the end of the day, a lot of agencies perform this or some form of this, this process. So one, you have a brand discovery. During that brand discovery, you're asking vetting questions like, what are some of your competitors? Who are some people that are performing well in your space? What's your vision? What are you looking to accomplish in the next two to five years? Questions that are gonna help you make informed decisions on how you're going to design and develop that website. Next up, you have sitemap development. Now that you have all this information gathered from the customer or client, or even your own freelance website, if you're looking to create a new website for yourself, you're going to be sketching out that sitemap. On the homepage, I'm going to have this. On the services page, I'll have a breakdown of my services and individual pages for those. So you're literally mapping out or sketching out your idea for your website. Then you have your low fidelity wireframe. Think of this as the bare bones visual aspect of your website. It's the blueprint, right? As I discussed before, it's literally sketches and ideas of what's going to be in each page and that position. Now, once you approve that or someone on your team or maybe you're working with the client, then you work into the high fidelity wireframe. And HiFi is essentially a screenshot of what that site will exactly look like. Think of it as a Figma file or um, a UX experience where you have a prototype and it's actually working, but it's not the live action website. Then you move into website development once you approve that. And then you have quality assurance where you're adding Google Analytics, you're walking through the website on different breakpoints like mobile, tablet, desktop, and you're looking to see if there are any issues and creating a nuance in that website to make sure that it goes live and it's perfect. Well, at least as perfect as it can be, right? As web designers, we all know, <laughs> sometimes you submit something and yeah, you got to go back and make some updates and changes in that live environment. And then you launch. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps for a full website build, right? You start with the discovery, you move through the sitemap and lo-fi and hi-fi, then you go into the development process and ultimately launch at the end of the day. Now, we've literally flipped this and revised this a bit. So the design process is tedious, it's long, it's dull, right? A lot of times by segmenting the design process into sitemap, lo-fi and hi-fi, 
fast moving companies don't have the time to implement, ideate, and assess their ideas. And I wanna spend a little bit of time here. So if you're working on your own project, you need to get it live by a certain day, or you're working with a startup or you're doing something, a lot of times you wanna to get to market and you wanna be able to test. Now, everybody talks about MVP, minimum viable product, getting to the market as quickly as possible, which I do believe is important, but it's a combination of both. You wanna be able to release a product that works well, that performs well, and then you wanna be able to release it and then assess that data. By doing the site map in this new process I'm gonna show you, it's gonna expedite that and make that timeline a lot smaller. So now you can get to market faster, use Google Analytics or Microsoft Clarity or any analytics tool you like to assess the data and assess the website experience. And then with that experience, take that and then make informed decisions on changes you want to make to the website. Now, let me show you our revised process. So we talked about the brand discovery, sitemap, lo-fi, hi-fi, web development, quality assurance, launch. Now I do wanna say that since we brought on Webflow about three years ago, the website development process has shrunk like <laughs> tremendously. So that's helped us a lot in regards to this process. So I did want to make that side note. Now, what we've done is we've changed this, the sitemap, lo-fi, and hi-fi, and combined it into one category. This is the sitemap and hi-fi wireframe process. Hi-fi wireframe process. <laughs> Tongue twisted there. So as you can see, we've really combined these three to make it really easy to work through this process, if, whether you're doing this by yourself, for a client, for a prospect, whatever, you're gonna be able to compress this. And I'll tell you right now, we've we, we since removed the low fidelity wireframe process about maybe eight or nine months ago, and we've seen a huge difference in project timelines. In most cases, a project will take us 60 to 90 days. We've almost shrunk that by like 20 or 30 days just by doing this, making this switch. So as you can see, brand discovery, sitemap, lo-fi, and hi-fi compressed into one where you have sitemap and high fidelity wireframe. So this new design process takes the guesswork out of hi-fi wireframe design by combining the sitemap and lo-fi process into a seamless update that's simple for designers, clients, and the team to understand and provide feedback on. Now, let's look at this new strategy. We've combined the sitemap and low fidelity process into one document, providing the client or design team with one asset. So whether you're a freelancer working on this by yourself, sketching out your studio website, you're making a website for your business or your brand, this is gonna really help you definitively do that in real time while making those changes so you can see structurally and visually what that would look like. Now, one, this is a seamless process. The team can see the sitemap in real time and understand the sections and components of a website. It's built in Figma, which is an online prototyping and, um, and comment tool where users can actually go in and leave comments directly in this space. It makes it an easy handoff for the design team. Also, if you're a designer looking to um, migrate this to a developer, it's really easy for them to go in and start to do this work. And then it's simple and effective way to visualize the website. So we created a Figma template with symbols to make creating sitemaps a breeze. It's an easy execution for designers. It's color coded and it's organized for the user experience. There's nothing else like this out there, y'all. I haven't seen anything like this that combines the power of lo-fi, hi-fi, and all these components to make it easy for you to do this and move straight into your hi-fi design. So let's walk through this sitemap hi-fi process. So again, we use a Figma template to build out a website sitemap that combines a sitemap and wireframe into one asset. There is a motion warning here, guys. So this is a live demo of Figma and it'll contain some zooming and scrolling. So just a little disclaimer for you. So let me go ahead and show you all what that looks like. There we go. So here is the Figma landscape here. Let me show you what this looks like. So first glance, you can't really see it too clearly because it's zoomed out. So I'm gonna go through this piece by piece. So what we've done is we've created a color legend right here. Now, anything in black is the actual page, right? So you can see the home, and this is the actual page. You have the content. Anything in gray is like a content area. These lines delineate sections on the page. So think of this as like a visual representation of a section on the website. Then anything in blue is a link or a button. You have the CMS. Now with Webflow, we're able to CMS all the things, right? We try to make a content management system out of many elements on the website from testimonials, resources, blogs, all that good stuff. We actually incorporated that 
into our sitemap template. Then yellow is anything linked to a form and then green is an image. So this is the color legend. And as you can see, these things are kind of pretty, right? I mean, they're kind of some good looking uh, sitemap images here. So let's go through the homepage together so I can show you what that looks like. So picture this, right? You're showing this to the client. They can look at this and get a general idea of how this content is going to be structured section by section. So you have the phone number, you have the navigation bar, right? With the menu items. And then you have apply today, which is important or prominent button there. That next section, think of this as an image header, right? You probably have an image in the upper right-hand corner. Since most users read left to right, you wanna follow that criteria. You have your main tagline here at the top left. Then you have your summary, right? Which is usually two to three sentences and then two buttons here, apply today and contact us. So now if I'm looking at this and I'm talking with this oh, uh, with my team or just myself, I can visualize what this section looks like. So instead of just having like a visual sitemap where it's like homepage, header section, middle section, footer, we have definitive examples or visual examples of what that would look like, right? With this one, we have three columns right here. With this next section, we can see this tagline and description. Then we have a big, large image here, a section of three here. And now we can actually use this, give this to our designer or use this to design ourselves to make a hi-fi wireframe. Now we have the homepage here, we have services, we have about. So we have all these pages kind of built out as templates. So we usually start with this template and we'll start to customize this accordingly for what the client needs are. FAQ, contact us, our blog template. As you can see, a lot of the green items, a lot of the gray items, we incorporate all the CMS here using this peach color. Now, there's another really cool addition here as well. I'm gonna zoom out and then I'm gonna go here to our reusable symbols. So we've created a section here with reusable symbols that will continuously add on. So if we're going in and building a sitemap template and a page, I could just go and grab these and be able to use them as needed. So if I'm building my page, I can take this, I can even hit copy, I can make a copy of that, I can put it right here. So as you can see, it's really easy to make these changes on the fly in this sitemap, especially since we're using this template to be able to do that. Now, we've also done this with the header, why us, blogs or latest resources, services content, mortgage calculator, calls to action, and you can expand on this. You can add as many reusable symbols as you need. The great thing about this process too is the more websites you create a sitemap with, the more reusable symbols you'll create. And then what you can start to do really is once you have a specific vertical, like let's say you work in BC or automotive, you'll probably have things that are common between those industries. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you to create these sitemaps on the fly for that specific vertical. Because as you do this more and more and you create more usable symbols, you're gonna have a library of all of this to be able to use. We also added single components. And again, this is a very simplified version of the sitemap template for you all to get acclimated and be able to leverage this tool when you're building out your websites. So just to recap some of these items here, at the top, we have the color legend, right? And again, you can change this however you want and however you'd like to use that at your agency. We've actually seen other agencies use this uh, for, for their uh, benefit, freelancers, designers, basically everyone has been using this to really cultivate and create these sitemaps within their business. So again, start with the color legend here, then you have your pages, right? As you can see, and then you have your reusable symbols and single components. And I tell y'all, just start with one project, maybe start with your personal blog, something to get your feet wet, what your palette in regards to the sitemap template. And it's gonna help you dramatically in regards to making these changes on the fly. So just to show you a few examples of this, here's a screenshot of the full sitemap template. You'll be able to leverage this template anytime you need to, to make your changes and updates on your site. The color legend can be edited and updated however you see fit. You can change it to match your brand colors, client brand colors, whoever you're working with or whatever project you're working on, you can make those updates. We have all the normal pages there, but you can expand on this. We've had sitemaps that have been 15, 20, 25 different layouts. So it's expandable as well. Then reusable symbols, and then it as a whole. So let's talk about the entire sitemap process.
And as we develop the sitemap, we have the ability to provide a visual breakdown of page sections. And that's the most important thing, especially when we work with others, they're able to see and visualize this website content and overall structure without the need of a lo-fi wireframe. So one, brand discovery, ask questions, uncover answers, and begin sketching out a sitemap for website design based on competitive analysis, vision, and design inspiration. All of us have some type of form of brand discovery when we're launching a brand or working with someone. Then we design a detailed sitemap page by page that visualizes what that website would look like. Then we hit the review and approval stage where easy collaboration between designer, creative director, and client regarding feedback by utilizing comments and collaboration with Figma. And that's one of the main reasons we did this in Figma so we can promote collaboration. Anyone that you want to share the sitemap with can go in, leave comments, and provide feedback in real time that you can then use to update. So what we usually do is we have version one of that sitemap. And then as we work through it, we create additional versions in Figma. By the time we get to the approved version, we might be three or four iterations in. And now we have this beautiful sitemap that's approved to go into high fidelity. The great thing is we'll be able to take that also have the design assets like logo, brand identity, and be able to create a beautiful high fidelity wireframe that will go straight into that. So look at this as a whole, and it'll really simplify the sitemap process for you, the agency, or you as a freelancer. Now, I did wanna show you all a few case studies just to give you visual examples of how we've done this in real time with projects that are currently in process. So, Here's one for a SaaS client. This is the actual older version of our sitemap before we revised it specifically for y'all. So <laughs> I hope you get the benefit of that. So this sitemap helped us conceptualize a, a detailed CMS with ease, making it easy to showcase examples to the client. Now, this was a huge build, probably 30 different pages. So as you can see, there are a lot of sections here that need to be broken down. Now, this helped us exponentially move from high five to development because the client was so happy and excited with the sitemap layout and structure that they were great and, and super grateful in regards to how that laid out. We saved almost a week of design time and it was easily organized CMS data for Webflow. So now what we can also do is we can send this to our data entry specialists to say, hey, here are the content pages we're looking to pull for the CMS. We need to export these files and import them into the new site. So this acts as a catalyst to be able to delve into the overall visual process of the website and give everybody an example. So here's the sitemap on the left, and then here's the actual finished product on the right that's in high fidelity. As you can see, a lot of the components stayed, right? We have at the top the tagline, we have the overview, we have a video header here right under that. You can see that we have like the stop click fraud section. So it gave us a really great idea and, and a concept for how we wanted to lay that out. We also knew which components we needed to incorporate into the CMS with Webflow. So that way we can create CMS items like logos, resources, testimonials, and other items that were really, really helpful. As you all can see, anything in green in this sitemap version is linked to the CMS. Anything in yellow is just a part of that section or a piece. And then red are any like clear calls to action in regards to those case studies. The great thing about this too, and side note is, imagine sending this finished sitemap to a designer. They get this and they can visualize in their heads how this structure should overall look like. Now it doesn't have to be verbatim, right? But if they say, okay, this area is going to have a video header, a tagline and a book a demo link, I know I need to include that in my overall design. Here's another case study for an online platform. So the sitemap process actually helped us push a project from sitemap to high five under a week using this process. The partner was able to visualize design and provide feedback, and then simple interface received approval by version two. Now, this is different because this is actually for a dashboard. So it's a little bit different than a website design. Uh, we used Webflow to build this out with, uh, with incorporation of memberships platform to be able to bring this dashboard to life. So as you can see on the right, at the top, we have the dashboard actual page. Black, we have that navigation bar. But if you were to look at this dashboard at a top line view, even just coming in here, you would pretty much be able to understand how this content functions. On the left-hand side, those green buttons are essentially fed through the CMS in the back end of Webflow. And anything in gray is part of that specific section. Yellow are the images. Purple are the clickable links to those individual pages. And we're able to take this and incorporate this so that way it's easy for you to visualize what you need in regards to this deliverable. 
Now, if I send this to a designer, they're gonna know exactly how we want to lay it out and how we want to structure based on a sitemap, as opposed to sending, you know, going through the sitemap, then going to low fidelity, then sending those assets. We basically combined lo-fi and sitemap into one step that makes it easy for them to visualize. So now we're taking this, we have the dashboard, and then we have a comment, right? So now I can send it to the client. They can say, well, I'm leaving feedback here where I want to change this resource. I'm looking for a way to provide educated resources to supplement each career path. We can walk through and talk through this. And a lot of times the clients that are not really adept to this web design uh, realm or world, it's easy for them to say, okay, I know exactly what I need to do. And so here is the before and here's the after. So as you can see, we've incorporated everything in this sitemap. So at the top, we've got the navigation bar, right? We've got the different career types, as you can see. We have the plan your path area, the downloadable guides. On the left-hand side, we have those buttons there as well. So it's almost a, and I, and it's not, again, it's not verbatim, but it gives you an overall structure highlight and idea of what that would ultimately look like. And that is there. And you can see the structure is, is really similar in regards to logo, you know, the overall menu and other items there. So with that said, y'all, I'm going to make a downloadable link for you to be able to grab this Figma template. I love to see the sitemaps and designs you create. This is going to really help you all take back ownership on this wireframe process and really help you not necessarily control the narrative, but be able to provide something and a deliverable to clients that's going to be really solid. Even if you're launching your own business, your own agency, your own portfolio page, create your sitemap this way, and it's going to really help you visualize and get the job done in regards to how you design and how you create your websites. So without further ado, this is the link to go ahead and download that sitemap. It's bit.ly forward slash webflow dash sitemap, or you can grab that QR code and just scan it for the link. And I hope that was helpful, y'all. Thank you again for your time. And I will see y'all at next year's WebflowCon. Peace out, y'all.